dear students hope you all are hail and hearty i strongly believe that you all must be utilizing this time in learning something new honing your english speaking skills learning how to cook helping giving a helping hand to your mother and your sister in household chores must be doing many a things to utilize this time and it's a good thing we must keep on learning we should not stop so i uh, believe and i know that my students are definitely making the best use of this covid-19 corona break dear students you must have heard about a proverb that in every uh, uh, da the darkest clouds come with a silver lining haven't you so what does it mean all the difficult situations all the problems in life they come with a solution the main thing is that we need to focus on the solution more not on the problems because problem is already there right so we are supposed to focus on what on the solution so here when we talk about the darkest clouds the darkest darkest clouds are of corona virus and when we talk about the silver lining that is the solution to it so we'll definitely come over it the situation will definitely uh, be gone and we'll be talking about it like uh, once upon a time we had this kind of uh, pandemic in our uh, country in the uh, all over the world we had this this kind of situation right so do you think that the birds the creatures the vegetation plants have they stopped to doing what they what is their basic nature no they never stop likewise we need to have a power of visualization visualization of to see something to see beyond those darkest clouds where the silver lining lies so from where will it come this power of visualization is within us it will come if we introspect so this is the right time to introspect and if we do that we'll definitely get the solutions and as i said earlier that the plants the trees the birds everything which is created by the uh, universe by the almighty whatever you call it they don't stop they never stop working they never stop doing what is their basic nature so why should we stop what is our basic nature i guess our basic nature is to learn something new as we must have heard from our elders from our parents maybe grandparents they always keep on saying that we must keep on learning we even learn the lesson of our lives on the death bed so that is a fact so here it's a suggestion that please do not lock down your mind your brain your thinking capabilities in this lockdown period just spread your wings just try to dive deep into the ocean of knowledge you will definitely get a plenty of knowledge a plethora of things which we have never heard about maybe never read about so try to utilize this time as much as you can so that when you come out of it you come out as an achiever as a winner that yes i could do something greater something better and i utilize this time in productive manner so here your teacher bhupender ji kaur we are going to talk about Uh, today's topic multi skill approach teaching language skills as you can see so when we talk about this topic multi skill approach skill so what do you mean by skill have you ever heard about it oh yes i have what does it do when we talk about the dictionary meaning of skill the dictionary meaning is having expertise in something in something particular so what do you mean by multi skill having expertise in various things 
whatever you do there must be something special something specified to you only specifically you can only do that just try to find out that as well what you can do that is very special and particularly only you can do that on this earth the multi scale approach here when we talk about languages do you really think that we need to have multi scale approach when we are talking about teaching language skills i guess so because when you say teaching language skills first of all what are those skills it's reading writing speaking and listening these four skills are there which one reading writing speaking listening the sequence should be first of all the child starts listening so the child doesn't need to practice on this that he has to uh, he has to be taught how to listen to the things so that skill is inbuilt we can listen but there is a difference a hairline difference between hearing a thing and listening so a child hears a thing whatever he is uh, whichever things or whichever people whosoever is uh, he is being surrounded with whatsoever they are being talking about or they are discussing they are sharing about he is hearing everything he doesn't know how to use the filter of his brain to segregate the things which he requires for his knowledge and which he must eliminate right so here comes the uh, teacher's job that she or he must teach her student how to develop the listening skill second when we talk about speaking listening is closely associated with speaking first we listen to the things and then we start imitating you must have seen uh, small kids they just try to imitate whatever you are talking whatever you are speaking most of the times you say oh we never used this word how my child is using that how my child is using a music language so mind it dear to that the child the child is hearing everything is hearing everything he doesn't have any kind of filters that is why he imbibes whatever he just imitates whatever you are speaking so his speaking starts immediately after listening these two things go hand in hand this is the simultaneous practice then third thing we are going to talk about in this lecture is uh, reading now the child is in the school and he knows how to speak how to listen to the things and how to read just a little bit of reading practice is required and the student will be a master in that and the fourth and the last one comes writing writing yes writing when you talk about writing you say oh i can't write anything am i a good writer or am i a writer even yes my dear we all can write the only thing which is required here is a little bit of guidance a little bit of supervision through which we can definitely write well so let's start with the topic when we talk about that let me switch these slides we will talk about first of all we are going to talk about reading ah uh, reading is a very important aspect how in india when a teacher goes to a, a college classroom the teacher is carrying a notion that students come from different backgrounds how i can use multi skills so whatever the traditional method the teacher has studied during her age the same method she tries to follow in her class as well forgetting about the present scenario the need of the students the need of the era nowadays the multi skill approach is actually required so when we talk about reading developing reading skills amongst the students 
how we can do it here i would like to cite an example of uh, english and foreign language university hyderabad what they have done they have uh, trained their teachers in such a way that they are now in a habit of using multi skill approach it is not a deliberate attempt to teach the students using this technique but it is natural like the traditional approach we used to follow so what do they do when they talk about reading they just tell the students to read aloud they take the students to the library now here i would like to uh, just uh, mention one more thing that english has most of the times english has been considered a library language in india so when we talk about this that english is library language it means it is related to the people who are well read who are knowledgeable who are kind of intellectual they are the ones who read who read more who go to the library and explore the unexplored world of the books right book is a window to the plethora of knowledge so uh, when you are making your child to read first step is tell the child to read aloud when the child is reading aloud what all things you are practicing along with him first the pronunciation second the sentence structure third the coherence when we talk about these three things pronunciation can be rectified can be corrected at a later stage because initially we try to focus on whatever the student is reading the student must be able to understand means comprehend must be able to interpret and should be able to communicate in his or her own words to other person so that is the main motive of this now you divide your students in groups you give as you assign them a task for example you have a, a children's book a story book a very short story maybe of around uh, one or one and a half page you assign a task to each and every group first group that group will read the chapter read the first uh, page aloud the second team let's say you have two teams in your class and the second team will just try to interpret whatever the first team has just spoken aloud or read aloud all right uh so lockdown day 4 see what's happening globally we are not bothered about it we are focusing mainly on this uh reading skills so reading here what we do in the classroom we just try to focus on the literary texts whatever are there in our syllabus number 1 number 2 we never go beyond that means we are focusing on the literary texts provided in our uh, in our syllabus which are important and on top of that we are not reading the entire text we are just focusing on the main part of the text and uh, reading the important questions the teachers come to the class and they just dictate the notes and leave here uh, dear students i would like to mention that in cefl or in uh, eflu which i have just uh, told you uh, english and foreign language university hyderabad they are not following this pattern they are having a good syllabus and uh, when the teacher goes to the class this task is assigned to the students so what they are going to practice through it uh, the other team is going to choose difficult words to ask to their teacher concerned teacher so through reading we are kind of playing a game in which the students are going to talk about new words for example the next uh, game which you can which the next game or activity which you can actually use in your uh, teaching that is whatever the objects are lying in front of you or in front of the students you just tell the students to identify those objects let's say if we are talking about college students let's say they are having a bag or a register or a notebook a book mobile phone 
a pencil, a pen, a paper, um, sharpener, maybe eraser, whatever objects they are having in front of them. You just tell them to uh, write a few, just to uh, read, just to uh, name those objects and then develop it. Right? So, while reading, they are going to learn about what coherence. They are going to learn how to interpret the context and uh, most importantly they will also be able to learn how to read between the lines because as far as the literature students of li English literature are concerned they are not supposed to uh, interpret whatever is written on the page they have to think beyond the lines they have to think out of the box whatever is being taught to them so what does a book do what is the role of the library when you read a book it enlightens you it gives something which generates a positive feeling in you it motivates you to do something to think about something and as far as reading is concerned it further motivates you to write something first when you have read plenty of things the entire knowledge the, all the words everything is there in your head and now you are just thinking about it what should i do with this and i've got plenty of knowledge and what should be done what should be done oh my god yes i can go and write something maybe or i can just go out and tell this narrate the stories to the world for the students whosoever require it so this is how the reading skills are developed here you can see in this uh, picture that this gentleman he is sitting in a chair holding a book uh, keeping a book in his lap and holding a mobile in his phone I believe you must have seen this kind of uh, scenario in your at your home maybe you are the one who is doing this now what is the requirement of a technology when you are reading a book my dear why do we require it because it is handy whenever I want to look for a word I don't want to break my momentum whatsoever I'm reading so while reading I'll just quickly switch to my mobile and if I don't have those kind of bad habits to go to my WhatsApp, to my Facebook, to all the notifications, whatever are there on my phone, I'll quick immediately switch to my dictionary. And that dictionary will lead me to the word which uh, where I am stuck. So that word, through that dictionary, I'm not only going to know the meaning of the word, but its etymology. The entire history of that word is going to be in front of me and also the uh, associated synonyms and antonyms including the sentences so mobile device is a very very beneficial invention if we use it rather than misusing it all right we should be wise enough we should be learned enough to know how to use the devices how to utilize the devices not to misuse it because nobody is going to teach us how to misuse it that is there within us that is always there in everyone so here is a very good uh, proverb you may say think before you speak read before you think how wonderful it is and I hope you will try to explain it. You will also try to interpret it in your own words. Here is my understanding of this quotation. When the writer says, think before you speak, do we do that? I don't think so. Everybody is just there to speak, 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 speak and speak. I am the one who can speak better and you must listen to me. We speak for the heck of it we don't listen to other person we are just speaking we even don't think once whereas the uh, proverb says think twice before you leave
we don't even think once when we talk about something so thinking is a must we'll get a good idea to float number 2 we'll have a better vocabulary number 3 we'll be able to focus on the topic which we are talking about number 4 our pronunciation is going to be better number 5 we'll definitely have a good coherence these five things are very very important when we speak so it's always better to think before speak Now read before you think. It's quite enlarged form that read. Why the reading should be emphasized? Nowadays we hardly read anything. We are having mobile in our hands, having the PDFs, and everything is available at just one click. Even then we don't read. There is a lack. because the teachers are not uh, indulging the students in various kind of activities when the students are involved in various kind of activities of reading then only the students will learn how to read so we must read before we think reading will uh, reading is going to widen up our horizon the kind of thoughts we have at this point of time will be far behind if we start reading because with reading there comes a wisdom a different kind of wisdom and a confidence that yes i know this particular thing and i can read i can speak better if you can think better you can speak better and if you can speak better you will have a lot of confidence and if you have confidence you will win the world so reading is a must to continue with the chain of getting a successful thing then next oh we are stuck here everybody is stuck at home locked down so as i said uh, in the beginning of my lecture that i don't consider lockdown is a lockdown for our brains for our activities for our knowledge for our reading for learning something new it's not locked down no wherever you are in whatever situation you are you must keep on learning like in this image you can very well see the kind of background she is carrying uh, there is a kind of rusty wheel the wall is not painted even cement is not there but she is sitting on the uh, heap of books to which she feels that she is blessed with and the kind of expressions she has while reading the book in her hand she is completely engrossed in the story or in the book whatever she is reading so dear students this covid 19 corona is going to be over very soon but please don't come out with a regret that we didn't learn anything we had 3 months or whatever the duration would be of this lockdown period please don't come out with a remorse that i could have done this i could have done those the those particular things please this kind of i could have thing should not be there you must come up as a winner yes you must be having stories to narrate to your teacher to your friends you uh, see i have done this i tried my hands in cooking i tried my hands in reading something new um i learned how to edit a video i learned how to make a video maybe there are plenty of things you could have done there are a lot of online workshops online conferences lot of things are going on you must indulge yourself in these kind of productive activities please don't waste your time so reading the learning things learning aspect it never stops it can never ever be stopped by any kind of calamity we learn learn and learn a lot
let's see the next one oh here what does this image depict mm, let's see this gentleman he is showing a slide on a huge uh, screen the audience is sitting in front of him and he's maybe he is trying to explain whatever is there on the screen yes here we are going to talk about speaking speaking skills how you are going to inculcate speaking skills in your students how you are going to improve their speaking skills do you have any kind of activities in your minds right now if you have please uh, comment in the comment box so that I should also get to know what kind of uh, speaking skills uh, activities for the speaking skills you have in your mind so speaking skills can be developed through various activities one of the activities uh, is um, uh, making groups of your students means making a team let's say you have 40 students or 30 students in your class and you are going to uh, divide all the students in teams and then you assign a task what would be the task they are having an object in their hand let's say uh, in the classroom maybe uh, they see the fan ceiling fan now you tell them that you have to speak 10 lines on the object whatever uh, comes in front of your, your eyes for example it's a fan so now they will speak 10 lines about fan here the teacher is not supposed to focus on how the student is pronouncing the words initially we are we should the teacher should not focus on that the teacher must focus on uh, whether the sentences were coherent, uh, coherent or not. Uh, then uh, number two, the, when the uh, student, when the child is speaking, when the student is speaking, the child should not be interrupted in between. Let the child complete his uh, ten lines and after that, whatever the rectifications are required, you must go for that. Alright, so speaking skills must be enhanced and it is a suggestion to all of you that you all must enhance and hone your uh, English speaking skills when it comes to uh, target language means the foreign language which in our case in in our case it is English when we try to make our student uh, learn how to speak in English uh, there is a problem uh, just a little bit of it uh, what kind of uh, problem we do the student uh, students face that is the interference of their mother tongue whatever they have heard in their own mother tongue in their mother language they will try to imitate the same that's why I said initially that a teacher must not focus on the pronunciation part because Punjabis accent will be a different one when you go to South India then again the English uh, spoken English accent would be uh, having a tinge of their mother tongue so it's uh, it is there that is why we have created Indian English English has been Indianized so it is accepted as well so students should be motivated to speak to speak in English to use the words they have in their vocabulary and then reading will be associated with it so that whatever they have read they must be able to speak an eloquent speaker is the one who can have a mass gathering in front of him or her not like this that all the chairs are lying vacant and nobody is there only one person is sitting there maybe waiting for <laughs> maybe waiting for Godo and Godo will never turn up the so speaking skills may be enhanced through various activities first activity is playing a game having an object in your in front of the child and the child will speak 10 or 20 lines or what's have what how and the number of lines he may speak he will speak on that uh, number two the student uh, 
the group wow, there may be a group discussion as well what will the group discussion do in the group discussion the teacher will assign a topic um, and then the students will discuss on that particular topic keeping in mind that they have to speak in English language only so here again the student will learn how to speak uh, at the same time simultaneously the child is also learning how to use the knowledge uh, whatever he has read so reading and speaking we go they are also going hand in hand next okay let's see what does this say hmm. can you guess yes it is writing nowadays we have a diary we have a pen and we also have laptop maybe laptop notepad ipad i don't know plenty of things are there devices are there but how to develop this skill writing skills writing skills are there in us so how a student is going to learn how to write first of all remember your childhood when the teacher used to uh, make us write your favorite uh, your favorite color maybe uh, your pet animal and remember that essay of 10 lines uh, the cow or my best friend we used to write 10 lines and there used to be a coherence in those 10 lines and what used to be that coherence one sentence must be connected with the second one, the second one with the third and third, the fourth and so and so and so forth. So writing skills can be enhanced through various activities again. So let's talk about just a few of those activities. First of all, uh, which activity? Okay, like the earlier uh, we have talked about when we are trying to develop the writing skills give a topic to the student which he or she is already aware of not a new one take the student from the known to the unknown all right so that the student gets into habit of uh, thinking and then writing it becomes convenient for the student if he does so so how would you do that? You will tell the student to write a paragraph, initially maybe of 10 lines. You may also have a kind of competition in your class, the creative writing competition. Um, then third thing what you can have is uh, competition with the juniors uh, and the, amongst the juniors and the seniors. Here, we may check which student is having an inclination towards writing skills. Because writing is a kind a talent, as an inborn thing, which is there. It's on, it only can be enhanced, it cannot be inculcated. So, writing skills may be developed amongst the students through various activities. <laughs> Just read this slide. Write without fear. Edit without mercy. So, whenever you are writing something, just write as if nobody is going to read it initially. Just write whatever comes to your mind. Keep on writing. Keep a diary in uh, in front of you or by, by your side always. So that whatever comes to your mind, you should just keep on writing it. Write without fear. But when it comes to editing, my dear, please don't have mercy on you or whosoever has written it. When you are editing it, please don't have mercy. It means you must edit when you are giving the final touch to your writing to your write-up so that whenever somebody reads it that person must appreciate it that person must engage himself or herself in that uh, re uh, writing whatever you have written so we have covered reading speaking writing 
along with these i have already told you what is listening and how the listening ability or the listening skills are developed how it is different from hearing hearing listening skills uh just okay let's have just a few uh, just one or two activities or examples how we can uh, improve the listening skills of our students please don't follow the traditional methods only try to mingle the methods the traditional as well as the modern methods the modern technology must be um, amalgamated in such a way that they create a new version of uh, teaching likewise uh, when you talk about listening skills never uh, be afraid of telling your students to watch something which is not in their syllabus to listen to the songs maybe to listen to the news which is being flashed to listen to the radio stations when they listen they will learn and when they learn they will be able to speak if you want to teach them uh, if a teacher wants to teach them a british accent then the channel bbc must be uh, must be suggested to them and if there is some american accent then hollywood movies are there there are plenty of movies based on the novels the plays written by famous uh, writers so it's better to suggest the students that they, that they must uh, that they must listen to the things uh, they must listen to the things and enhance their listening skills and here we are going to thank you uh we i end my lecture here i hope you all must have learned a bit of things little bit of things and if you haven't then kindly comment in the comment box and do utilize this time in learning something new i wish you all the best stay at home stay safe and stay tuned with me see you in the next lecture thank you very much thank you students